starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the First Lady, Dr. Joe Biden, has COVID up next, her symptoms so far, and how the White House is dealing with the situation. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. We're starting at 81 degrees, uh, already a little warm as we, you know, prepare to get warmer later this afternoon. All right, good morning, San Antonio. It is 4.30 this morning. It is September 5th. Thank you so much for starting your Tuesday with us. For some of you, it's the first day of the work week. Uh, calling me for out. For some of you, it's the, <laughs> did you do anything fun over Labor Day weekend? Yeah, we went to visit family. Uh, I have a, a newborn niece. <coughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Very, very tiny, very cute. Shameless uh, plug to your Instagram. The pictures are adorable. <laughs> oh, yep. thank you so much. Uh, but we had a good time. And of course, uh, we were in Laredo, which is even hotter than it is here yeah. in San Antonio. <sighs> what about you, Mike? Good went time down, with the family? Went down to the beach on uh, Sunday, down to, to Port A us and about a million of our uh, closest friends down there. So, but the nice little sea breeze coming out there had, as long as you had some shade, it wasn't too bad. But then yesterday it got pretty darn toasty around here. Another triple digit day and we are going to continue. So as far as Labor Day being the unofficial end of summer, eh, it's not living up to it this year. We've got mostly clear skies right now and mold and ragweed. Mold is on the moderate side. Ragweed is low and it is a green conservation day. So if you want to scan this QR code and find out ways to help uh, conserve a little bit of energy later on this afternoon. Now, as far as the rest of today, this morning, 80 degrees, couple of clouds out there, southeasterly wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then later on this afternoon, yeah, 101, mostly sunny skies. And there's looks like way down the road, a little bit of light. Finally, at the end of the tunnel, we're going to have to wait a while because this uh, first full week of September is down Definitely going to be on the hot side. More triple digits racking them up. And also we're going to talk about today being a rather infamous anniversary in the weather. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Max. Thank you, Mike. Budget work continues this week for the city of San Antonio and Bear County. Both governments are scheduled to approve their 2024 budgets next week. Now, San Antonio voters can still have their say on the city's $3.7 billion budget proposal. The city will host a town hall meeting tonight at the Copernicus Community Center. That starts at 6.30 this evening. A public hearing is also scheduled for Thursday morning at 9 in council chambers. The final vote on the 2024 fiscal year budget is scheduled for Thursday, September 24th. Now, as for the county, commissioners will hold their next budget workshop meeting tomorrow. All right, now to the exodus in the Nevada desert, where tens of thousands of people finally allowed to leave the Burning Man Festival. They were stranded for days after torrential rains made roads impassable. Now people are waiting in traffic for more than seven hours to get out. ABC's Rihanna Ali has more. Overnight, the giant statue of a man set on fire in the Nevada desert, signaling the end of Burning Man Festival, which became a muddy trap for tens of thousands of people. Three months worth of rain fell in just hours on the festival, making roads impassable in the dry Nevada desert for days. Go, 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 go! The mud proving too thick for most vehicles to traverse. Those monsoonal rains changed everything, turning this lake bed into a mud pit that traps everything, RVs, shoes, people, but now, the roads have dried out enough that that exodus has begun. It stretches across the horizon. Trucks, RVs, bikes, cars. It's a mile and a half long. Yesterday afternoon, organizers finally announced the main route in and out of the festival was finally reopened, creating a miles long traffic jam, saying it could take more than seven hours to reach the road that leads to the nearest town. We had to put uh, trash bags on the shoes in order for us to not, you know, uh, sink into the so mud. It, like it feels like uh, five pounds on each leg. Some walking to the nearest paved road five miles away, hoping to hitch a ride. It did take me like 30 minutes to walk like 40 feet because it was so, so liquid and the water was sinking, you know, five, six feet in. Celebrity DJ Diplo telling ABC News about his trek with a group of celebrities. Carly Kloss was their leader. We walked out with her and Cindy Crawford and Randy Gerber and Chris Rock. The musician and comedian Chris Rock eventually catching a ride with some fans. We had like 10 of us jumped in the back of his truck and we took us the last two miles. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. 
Well, First Lady Dr. Joe Biden officially has COVID. Now, the White House announced that she tested positive last night. A spokesperson for the First Lady says she's only experiencing mild symptoms. Right now, she's recovering at her home in Delaware. As for President Joe Biden, the White House says he has tested negative for COVID. His doctors will keep testing this week, make sure he does not have any symptoms. A U.S. official says that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un may travel to Russia this month to meet with President Vladimir Putin as the Kremlin tries to acquire military equipment for use in its war in Ukraine. A National Security Council spokeswoman says that the Russian defense minister traveled to Pyongyang recently and tried to persuade North Korea to sell artillery ammunition to Russia. She said the U.S. has information that Kim expects these discussions to continue to include leader-level diplomatic engagement in Russia. And the first anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II's death is just days away. Remember, she died in Scotland September 8th of last year. And now a new commemorative coin honoring the late queen is on display. The East India Company unveiling the coin, which is more than nine and a half inches across, making it wider than an NBA basketball. It's a good perspective there. The coin dubbed the crown is made from almost, get this, eight pounds of gold. It features more than 6,400 diamonds. The coins feature either portraits of the late queen or symbols of truth, justice, and courage. Now, the company says the crown took more than a year to produce. It was in the planning stages before the queen even died. It's valued. And yes, Stephanie, $23 million. Oh, wow. A lot. <laughs> it's a lot. I'd say it's, it's a pretty, you know, majestic symbol there. Yeah, it is. Time now, 436, 81 degrees. And yeah, I can help families deal with the cost of college, so why aren't they taking advantage of it? I'm next, how the 529 College Savings Plan could help you send your kid to college. Oh, yeah, no, those 529s can be crucial. Making sure you're saving up because college is not cheap. Speaking of which, you know, people returning back to class today after a four day weekend. Some people had Friday off too. I know, the lucky ones. <laughs> did you have Friday off? No, I did oh, not. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm not trying to throw shade. All right, not too many people out and about just yet, but Stephen Cavazos is in the building. We're going to check in with him in our next half hour if anything pops up. And let's look out there with live cam. Looking good right now. 81 degrees, not too hot, but we know things will warm up later this afternoon. Be prepared for that. And we'll be checking in with Mike to see what you can expect the rest of the week. Good morning and welcome back. One of the biggest things parents of teens have to grapple with, how to afford college. It is not cheap. No, it's not. And that's where a 529 college savings plan comes in. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains how it works. This is the moment many parents save for for years, college. A 529 plan is one of the best ways that you can save for college. It's a state-sponsored investment plan that allows you to save for your kids' college education no matter how far into the future. But a lot of families don't take advantage of it. Only 30% used a 529 account to help pay for college this year, according to Sally May. One benefit of a 529 plan is that since the money saved is invested, it has the potential to multiply over time. For example, if you opened a 529 account for a newborn this year and contributed about $250 a month, you'd have more than $113,000 when your child is 18. That's more than double your $54,000 investment. One of the greatest things about it is that the money grows tax-free, and many states even give you a tax deduction. And if you get a later start, that's okay. It's still less money that you'll take out as a loan later on. There are rules. The money has to be used on qualified education expenses like tuition, books, room and board. And you need to spend the money in the same tax year, not school year, that you make the withdrawal. And be sure to keep receipts in case the IRS has questions later. And if you have leftover funds, you can use it for graduate school or for another family member. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, just about 442, 81 degrees. High temperatures are definitely having a negative effect on farms right now. And up next, why those same hot temperatures are already affecting livestock and ranchers this coming winter. And next, a Grammy-winning DJ speaking out about his Burning Man experience. Why it took him 30 minutes to walk just 40 feet. And welcome back. It's 444. As thousands are finally able to leave the Burning Man Festival, another celebrity is telling us about his experience. ABC's Matt Gutman has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, Grammy-winning DJ Diplo speaks out about his Burning Man experience. It did take me like 30 minutes to walk, like 40 feet, because it was so, so liquid and the water was sinking, you know, five, six feet in. And that was really hard to balance. The globally famous DJ had been at Burning Man for three days before escaping the mud on foot, walking six miles. And we just concentrated and made our, made our way out. We just hoped there wasn't going to be any more rain or we would get caught in the dark. Filming this video of their journey. Chris Rock was kind of pacing with me and we just got to a, a, a truck that was stopped for a second. They're like, oh, Diplo, we love your music. But if you need a ride at the end, we got you. So we had like 10 of us jumped in the back of his truck and we took us the last two miles and um, I put him on the guest list for eternity for my shows. And we'll have much more on the mass exodus from Burning Man coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Matt Gutman, ABC News, Black Rock, Nevada. Back here at home, the summer's historic temperatures coupled with current drought, well, it's hitting ranchers and farmers pretty hard. It's driving the cost of hay bales through the roof, and as RJ Marcus reports, it could lead to even more problems for livestock and South Texas ranches this winter. The hay market is taking a major hit this summer. Supply is very low and our demand is fairly high because the majority of the state of Texas is in some level of drought. The lack of production is leaving suppliers and livestock owners scrambling for options. Producers look to alternatives, so crop residues, other crops that can potentially be harvested for hay. Often producers look for hay supplies outside of our state to have them shipped in or, or trucked in, which can become very expensive. Carl Chapman has owned Bovardi Feed and Seed for more than 30 years. He says it's been a rough two-year stretch. This year and, and last year were are bad. Uh, hopefully we can get some rain this fall and in the springtime. Well, the price for a round bale of hay just like this has definitely spiked up. So Carl tells us that for a round bale like this, right now he's selling it at about $140. Last year it was even worse, about $160. He says on a good year, it would be closer to about $120. Feed expenses has gone up completely, uh, probably about 40% um, uh, just because of the drop. Jose Martinez owns four horses. A few months ago, he was getting round bales for about $100. Can you imagine if you are, if you own uh, stables and or uh, if you have cattle, uh, it, it, it impacts uh, much more. People may have to sell their livestock or reduce their herd size. And with fall and winter getting closer, Corher Olson says producers and buyers need to take advantage of any rain we get because supply is expected to stay limited. Build up those hay stocks and store that hay appropriately within a barn or covered shelter to protect it. There's always ups and downs, but um, we're fortunate. We've got good people and they've been loyal to us, so that helps. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Quick check of the roads with TransGuide. Looking over at Highway 281 at Nakoma, where things are moving early this morning and looks good over there at Loop 410 at Marbuck Road as well. All right. It's funny to see people on the road because yesterday at 448 in the morning, no one was on the road. And I was out here <laughs> like, oh, people are going to try to beat the heat, beat the traffic for Labor Day weekend driving. No Some one. Sleeping in. Yeah. yeah. Good right. for them. You don't have to get up. Don't good get up. For, good yeah. for you, too. Yeah. When you're not at work, <laughs> when do you sleep in until? Uh... <laughs> So, I mean, six. Okay, that's pretty yeah, good. Six thirty. I mean, maybe. but I mean, it just depends. What about your, you? Your body gets used to getting yeah. up this early, so yeah, maybe five thirty, six o'clock. Okay. Seven, good, seven o'clock's a good day. So. And you? Probably about five thirty. Yeah. Wow, five early, yeah. earlier. <laughs> All right. Uh, this weekend was fantastic. Like I said, a bunch of people went down to the coast, and it was gorgeous down there. Here's a beautiful picture, That's Mr. Pretty. McClellan. Usually, he's taking them over there. Oh, I thought lake. you were going to take the picture. No, our viewers have much better pictures uh, than what I can take. So anyway, yeah, usually uh, taking pictures there at uh, Woodlawn Lake, but this one's down there on the uh, this coast there at Port A. Beautiful. Yeah, it was very pleasant. If you had uh, some shade and with that nice sea breeze coming on in there, it was nice. All right, we continue to rack up. I mean, Hopefully this record is never broken 68 days at 100 degrees or better. This is as of yesterday and we are going to get up into basically mid 70s. It's looking like low to mid 70s as far as the number of days because we've got triple digits all the way through the uh, the weekend. So 
Ah, yeah, rather infamous number. Clear skies right now. A couple of clouds uh, as the morning rolls on. 81 in town, 82 Castroville, and same thing Stinson. We've got a fair amount of humidity out there this morning, and some of that did stick around in the afternoon yesterday. We have a heat index right now of 86 in town, 87 Canyon Lake, Castroville, 89 there at Stinson. Dew points will be dropping down somewhat, but even so, when you're hanging around 60, low 60s, add to the the heat there the temperature a little bit so somewhat of a heat index later on this afternoon not as as pleasant in the afternoon as what we've had the past few days when dew points have been dropping down into the about mid 50s even later on in the afternoon of course the humidity is going to come back up in the overnight hours so throughout the day today we are going to drop down to 80 this morning a couple of clouds hanging around here all the way up to 91 today at noon and then 101 high temperature today and just to kind of put it in perspective of course starting off the month of august was the historically hottest time of the year 97 normal high temperature right now the normal high is 93 so we're almost 10 above normal now let's jump ahead in time to this weekend and nothing going on friday nothing going on saturday however we get into sunday and later sunday we're going to start to see maybe a stray shower or two trying to pop up around here and the reason is this high is going to start to shift off to the west a little bit and as we get into Next week, then we're going to start to see kind of an overall pattern change. So this is encouraging for next week. This week we stay at triple digits, like I said, all the way through the weekend. So uh, today is going to be day number 69, 70 tomorrow. So we're going to be uh, racking up to about 74, 75 these triple digit days. But then, like I said, next week we start to see a pattern change 90s and also a chance for a couple of showers. Uh, maybe Sunday, Monday, better shot right now, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Very nice. Still a week away, uh -huh. <laughs> but, it is, but it is encouraging looking yes. down the road like that. Yes, we'll take that encouraging news right now. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. It's funny. You're like, hopefully we don't break these records again until tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, in future years, the whole. Uh, uh, no, this is about 452, 81 degrees. Well, up next in Music World, remembering Smash Mouth lead singer Steve Harwell, plus why it's the beginning of the end for Aerosmith. Welcome back. The lead singer of Smash Mouth being remembered, plus a big moment for a famous Hollywood director and Priscilla Presley. For the latest, what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Melissa Don. The music world remembering Smash Mouth lead singer Steve Harwell. He passed away in his Idaho home, according to the band's manager. The cause of death, liver failure. And then I saw her face. The Grammy-nominated singer, whose hits were featured in the movie Shrek, was 56. Director Sofia Coppola and Priscilla Presley receiving a seven-minute standing ovation at the Venice International Film Festival following the premiere of the biopic Priscilla. Coppola says the hard work was worth it. And I was so nervous to show her the film for the first time. And um, we watched it and she said, that was my life. You did your homework. And um, I was relieved <laughs> because it was very important to me that she be happy with it. While at the same time, I'm trying to imagine the, the story in my head. The film based on Presley's memoir, Elvis and Me, is in competition for the festival's top prize. Don't you want this Fans are being called to walk this way for Aerosmith. The Rock and Roll Hall of Famers kicking off their Peace Out Farewell Tour, their biggest production ever. The 40-day tour runs through the new year. I'm Batman. And your favorite superhero or villain, sure. actor Michael Keaton, celebrating a birthday, turning 72. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Melissa Don, ABC News. He looks great. Yeah, he does. But also, Steven Tyler, uh -huh. 75. Wow. Yeah. It's, ki it's still killing it, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he oh, is. There you go. Time now, 456, 81 degrees. And First Lady Jill Biden has tested positive for COVID-19. Up next, what the White House is saying about how she's doing so far and the precautions that are being taken for President Biden. And San Antonio police dealing with another shooting in just the last 24 hours. A 27-year-old aggravated robbery suspect shot and killed on the city's southeast side. Well, the police chief says the man was wanted for at least four different warrants.
And a quick check of the roads with TransGuy looking over at this shot at I-37 at Southton Road. Uh, we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos about these. There. Yeah, the flashing lights and I think the driver that just crossed the median there. Not too good. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos for the latest. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a deadly shooting on the city's southeast side. We now know the suspect shot and killed. We also hear from Chief McManus why the shooting unfolded. We've got a lot of investigative work to do before we figure out exactly what happened. Up next, what police and the chief say about the suspect's warrants. And it's still technically summer, I guess, here in San Antonio. We're starting at 81 degrees and looking for another warm afternoon. All right, good morning. It is September 5th. So Labor Day, the unofficial end of summer? I for right? some, We gotta wait for the winter fall for solstice. Some, for what, some what areas, here, but not for us. Yeah. <laughs> we're I mean, we're still well into summer. <laughs> still triple digit day after triple yeah. digit day. The celestial end of summer is the autumnal equinox. Meteorological end was the end of uh, August, because okay. June, July, August are the meteorological. So we're in meteorological fall. Uh, yes, the unofficial end of summer, but just throw all that out the window because we're still looking at yeah. temperatures. <laughs> so we're still talking summer around here. 80 degrees right now. That bottom number is fairly high. We got a dew point of 74. So you walk outside, you're definitely going to feel the humidity this morning. And yep, we are going to continue to rack up triple digit temperatures today. 101. This will be day number 69, just in, keep your, in case you're keeping track. No change in the aquifer yesterday and the allergens. Mold moderate, a little bit of ragweed is now starting to uh, show up. Take a look at some of the heat index readings right now. So yeah, with all that humidity out there, feels like 87 Canyon Lake, Stinson, 86 Castorville, 85 out at the airport. And we do have, like I said, mold moderate and ragweed is on the low side. 91 at noon, 101 one high temperature today and of course that's nowhere near the all-time record which we did not talk about the last half hour it was back in do you remember 2000 anybody have a guess on how hot it got back then we'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority mr cavazos haven't seen you in a while good morning sir how's it going yeah mike it's been a hot minute over here but uh well actually see if we can get it back here at the shot at trans guy 37 at south and road we'll catch up soon you can see that we have a stalled 18 wheeler out there along the southbound lanes of i-37 uh, i was just checking some of my sources and it does look like this is causing some delays along those southbound lanes as we saw as we went to commercial break some of those vehicles that are traveling along the frontage road were actually crossing the median. That's a big no no. So just make sure that you watch out. We'll keep an eye on that and hopefully uh, we'll see a better update soon. Our map is not picking up that delay just yet, but you can guarantee you that's a pretty busy area for anyone that is heading southbound along 37, maybe to Pleasanton a little bit later this morning. But thankfully, the overall look at the map, we are off to a quiet start as folks return to work and kids return to class. It's an early start, but if you plan on hitting the roads and heading to the Alamo City, the northbound lanes along 37 shouldn't be too bad. 28 minutes at this hour, it's about uh, half an hour or so heading in along US 90 eastbound from Castroville, and that arrival from Lytle along I-35 northbound should take about 16 minutes. But we'll get it back here here on Transguide 37 at South End Road seems to be the big problem spot, at least for right now. But there are more big closures on the way. I'll tell you what, we have more happening along Loop 1604. I'll tell you what to expect coming up a little bit later on. Max. Thank you, Steve. And now to some late breaking news. Two different kinds of calls at the same time leading San Antonio police to one crime scene. They say in the middle of it, they found a man with a gunshot wound. Katrina Weber is live in the Medical Center area, the 4,000 block of Horizon Hill. And Katrina, did they have any idea who shot him? No, they don't. They don't have any suspects in mind, anyone in custody at this point, but they do have lots of evidence and they have it all here in this crime scene here in the 4,000 block of Horizon Hill. The police say they found shell casings in three different places. Also in the parking lot of this apartment complex, the Horizon Hill Apartments, that's where they found the victim and his car. It's still there uh, in the position where they found it. It crashed into a parked car and police say the man who was inside the vehicle had a gunshot wound to his head. Now, they're not sure which came first, the crash or the gunshots. They're still trying to sort that all out. But again, they did get calls from people for both of those events, the gunshots and the crash, and all leading them to this one location. Again, police have no idea uh, at this point who is responsible for the shooting. The man who was shot was rushed to a hospital, and police say he was in critical condition. 
Reporting live in the Medical Center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also this morning, we now know a suspect dead after being shot by San Antonio police. This all unfolding near Prestwick and South Cross. This is the third person to be shot and killed by SAPD in less than a week. The chief of police sharing something that we've heard before. Now he says the man was a quote, violent individual who should have been in jail. And as our Avery Everett reports, that suspect was under police surveillance. We've got a lot of investigative work to do before we figure out exactly what happened. San Antonio police are investigating a deadly shooting on the southeast side where officers shot and killed a man they say may have shot at them. Chief William McManus says that suspect had four aggravated robbery warrants. He is a violent individual. He should be he should have been in jail. That man has yet to be identified, but Chief McManus says he allegedly committed a robbery last night and two more this morning. But this individual has a lengthy history uh, with police. SAPD says robbery units followed that man for hours. That's when Chief McManus says the suspect, quote, may have shot at officers. In this case, the suspect, we understand, he had a weapon, we know, and we understand that he was pulling that weapon, which, which prompted the officers to protect themselves. This marks the third suspect SAPD officers have shot in the last week. The officer's actions and these types of situations are predicated on the actions of the suspect. No officers were injured tonight, but Chief McManus says there's more to be investigated. Chief McManus says it appears that man shot at officers, and I asked for clarification as to what appears means. He said he couldn't give that to us at this time, only knowing that the man had a weapon and that he was pulling it. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And later today, all eyes will be on Austin. The impeachment trial for suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton will begin. If you remember, the Texas House of Representatives impeached him months ago. Paxton's accused of repeatedly abusing his office to help a donor. More than 4,000 pages of evidence have been published in this unique case, and there's no judge in the trial. Instead, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick will oversee the proceedings. Michael Ahrens is a law professor at St. Mary's, and he says Texans should be prepared for the unexpected when it comes to this trial. Even though the rules that the Senate passed with regard to how to conduct the impeachment are very legalistic, very law-like, an impeachment trial is a political event more than a legal event. Now, Paxton's wife, Senator Angela Paxton, will be there, but she will not be allowed to participate in deliberations or closed sessions. If any article of impeachment results in a conviction, lawmakers could vote to remove Paxton as attorney general. And we'll bring you full coverage as that testimony gets underway. And right now on our website, we break down how the trial will operate. Just look for this article on KSET.com. Uh, developing news out of Washington, D.C. First Lady Joe Biden testing positive for COVID. White House says she's experiencing mild symptoms and will remain at home at a beach in Delaware. And President Biden tested negative last night as he prepares to head to India Thursday for the G20 summit. As ABC's M. Wynn reports, officials say he will undergo regular testing. Overnight, First Lady Jill Biden testing positive for COVID a year after she last battled the virus. The White House says the 72-year-old is experiencing mild symptoms and will remain at the Biden's home in Delaware. The president, who is not with her, has tested negative. It's good to be almost home. Yesterday, the president campaigned in Philadelphia, and he set to travel to India and Vietnam on Thursday. The White House says Biden, who will turn 81 in November, will receive regular testing and monitoring throughout the week. Both the president and first lady tested positive for COVID last summer, and each experienced rebound cases shortly after. Both experienced only mild symptoms and were treated with the antiviral medication Paxlovid. The first lady's diagnosis comes amid a COVID COVID summer surge with hospitalizations and deaths up nearly 20 percent in recent weeks. Now we're living in this a bit of a fantasy world where mm. we're pretending that COVID is not relevant. Last week, Dr. Deborah Burks, a member of the Trump COVID task force, warned that people were still at risk. There is a lot of COVID out there and we're not testing for it and we're not 
telling people to get tested. A new round of booster shots is expected later this month, but it's unclear how well they'll protect against a new variant that has been detected in at least five states. And with millions of kids now heading back to school, the surge could grow. Some health care facilities in New York and California have reinstated mask mandates as a precaution. As for the First Lady, the last time she and the President were known to have been together in person was Saturday when they surveyed storm damage in Florida and returned to their beach house in Delaware. M1, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 509, 80 degrees. And Google is turning 25. Up next, a look at some of the biggest search terms as the engine marks a quarter century of searches. And the South Texas sun has not been kind this summer in more ways than one. Why some New Braunfels area businesses say the heat is bad for business. And that sun will not go away today. We're going to have a lot of it this afternoon. But for now, hey, a nice cool 80 degrees. We'll take it. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So some of us, not pointing any fingers, are returning from a long Labor Day weekend. For many, it is the unofficial end of summer, but this year, a lot of people just want summer to be done. Yeah, I agree. Patty Santos takes us to New Braunfels, where business owners are coming up with a plan to make up for a very slow summer. We are the busiest by far on Saturday and Sunday. Our busiest months are June, July, and August. Dennis and Jennifer Wilson are the owners of several New Braunfels businesses, including the Smith's Bed and Breakfast. For them, the triple-digit heat and drought have not been great for business. With our um, our vacation rental um, bookings, they have been very last-minute um, bookings. It's quite a change from a record-breaking summer in 2022. Up until spring break, we were matching record-breaking last year. President and CEO of the New Braunfels Chamber, Jonathan Packer, says people simply aren't jumping at the opportunity to go outside. The chamber is tracking a drop of 3 to 4 percent in hotel occupancy this summer. Dining, the water park, and river shops all depend on tourists who stay to play. But it's still been a busy summer, just not as busy as it can be when um, the weather's a little more favorable. With the summer dwindling down, all these businesses are looking to what's ahead. Just with all the festivals, we have um, the Kamau County Fair coming up, uh, in which we have a lot of people come in town for just the parade because it comes right downtown. Dia de los Muertos Festival, Worst Fest, end of year holidays, New Braunfels business owners say they're ready to roll with it. We've been in it in town for 20 years, so it's, uh, we've seen it up and down, and I've given up on trying to predict. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 515, and speaking of the heat, it is already 80 degrees. Yes, this is only a test now. Up next, we're going to tell you about a new test of the emergency alert system that is coming soon to your phone and TV. I'm stressed. It's just a test. Yes. All right, taking a live look out at the roadways. There's a lot going on out there. Stephen Cavazos is in the building. It's just actually a few feet away from me. He's been monitoring it all. We're going to check in with him in just a few moments. From big cities to small towns and on main streets across the U.S., you'll find PNC Bank helping businesses both large and small, communities, and the people who live and work there grow and thrive. We're proud to call these places home, too. They're where we put down roots. And where together, we work to help move everyone's financial goals forward. PNC Bank. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Special K is oven toasted to crisp perfection, then tossed with yogurty goodness, or maybe some red berries. Special K, in so many craveable varieties, so you can do what's delicious. Welcome back. Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back to everyone. Yeah, Steve yeah. Mavazos. Yeah. How was your Labor Day weekend? Uh, I was sick, actually. Uh, so, yeah, I had an allergic reaction. But it looks like you had a little tan, Mike. Yeah, big you tan. a little bit more... Uh, Went down to the beach yeah. on on Sunday and then by the pool and I stayed at the pool yesterday. Nice. So yeah, and That's I good. should have put a little more. You know, you always <laughs> miss that one little spot. 
<laughs> That's why the spray on sunscreen, which I love, uh -huh. should be like ceiling paint. Have you ever used the ceiling yeah. paint that goes on kind of pinkish? So yeah. you know you've gotten everything and then okay. it dries white. They need to have that so it goes on colored and then so, because there's a couple of spots. Good idea. Like, so you don't oh, miss anything. Yeah. 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 Well, that's just my. Yeah. <laughs> Good advice. So. Good advice. Million dollar industry. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> they, they're going to do that. I'm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. Uh, yesterday, I didn't really miss out on much because traffic, as you mentioned, was pretty quiet for the yeah. most part, which is great. Uh, this morning, we're starting off with a few issues out on the roadway. Now, we have our trans guide cameras on rotation at this hour, just so you can get a look and see uh, if you have, plan on hitting the roads, heading through any of these locations. It shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. Two eighty at Nicoma. Very quiet, but as you saw a few times, we have that trans guide camera of that 18 wheeler that's still uh, stalled out along 37 southbound. Now it does look like this is along the access road, so it's not impacting the main lanes, but that exit ramp to 37 at Southton is blocked. So if you're heading southbound along the, these lanes, just make sure to watch out. We're not spotting major delays just yet because it is very early, so we have that on our side, but be on the lookout. Wide look at the map back here in town. Plenty of green on the screen for a lot of folks that plan on hitting the roads and get in the morning commute rolling early, but be on the lookout later tonight. We do have some construction taking place. It's part of the 1604 North expansion project. Now remember the goal here is to increase mobility and reduce congestion, but in the meantime, we'll probably see some congestion. This will take place tonight and wrap up on Monday, September 11th, eight in the evening at five in the morning. That's when we'll see a full closure of the eastbound frontage road from John Peace Boulevard and Lock and Terre Parkway to I-10. A lot of information, a lot of words on your screen, but if you scan this QR code, those words will be at the tips of your fingertips. Uh, tips of your fingertips. Hmm. All right, well, that takes you to our KSAT <laughs> traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures on our website. You can head over there and plan your commute ahead of time, Mike. Well, thank you very much, sir. And a lot of folks were enjoying the pool yesterday, including this little, uh, what is it? That wouldn't be a gaggle, little, little flock, something like that of little birds. I don't know what kind of birds they are. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture, Sandy. All right, a lot of clear skies hanging around here this morning. Let's jump ahead to the future and show you where the, the kind of pattern change is going to be taking place. Of course, there's that high, which has been plaguing us most of the summer, sitting just about right on top of things, and that's going to stay in place. And as a matter of fact, just kind of almost scooch in a little closer as we go on into the latter portion of the week. So what that means is it is actually going to be getting hotter. We'll be at 101 today, but we're looking at 102 to 104 by the end of the week, and that's going to be Friday and starting off the first part of the week. And then that high starts to kind of work its way off to the west a little bit more, and it's going to start to weaken ever so slightly. Notice how we're seeing more of these kind of lighter shades of kind of orange and yellow on the map and the, the deeper red, meaning the really intense high pressure is kind of fading away somewhat. We get into the first part of the week. That high is really going to move on out of here and this almost a front is going to try and work its way down in our direction. Now that's going to be lying across the area. Again, the high is not on top of us. We're in this the front side of that clockwise rotation, so we'll get a little bit of this northwesterly flow around here. That is always good at getting some of those stray showers to pop up, and that's going to be the case going into the first part and middle of next week. Again, that high is going to kind of scooch on out of the way, and we will start to see the influence a little bit more of some lower temperatures as well as the rain chances going into the middle part of next week. We are at 80 right now in town, 82 at Castroville, and yeah, we've got plenty of humidity out there right now, but then that is going to drop down as the uh, afternoon rolls on. We do have a heat index right now, mid and upper 80s in a lot of spots, and like I said, yeah, dew points do drop by later on this afternoon. Noon. Temperatures, we are going to work our way up through the 80s. A few clouds left over this morning, 91 at noon, 101 high temperature today. And just get used to racking up more triple digit temperatures as we go on through the rest of the week. Like I said, it is going to be getting hotter as we approach the end of the week. But then by Sunday, last eh, stray shower too, same thing Monday. Better chance right now, Tuesday, Wednesday, and lower temperatures. We're looking at, uh, say, mid-90s, closer to normal nice. high temperature by the middle part of next week. So we're starting to see that, that pattern change, a little more of a, dare I say, fallish kind of Whoa. pattern coming in here. So don't get, don't get your hopes up for you know, sweater weather or anything like that. No, yet, but but <laughs> at, at least the, you know, yeah. the, the high plaguing us is going to kind of scooch out of the way. It'll be our reward after 104. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Time now, 524, 80 degrees.
Up next, how Meta and LG are working on a new headset that will rival the Apple Vision Pro. In today's Tech Bites, Google turns 25. During that time, it's gone from a dorm room idea to an integral part of life. A study says 38% of searches involve people, celebrities, or politicians, 27% tech products, and 15% sporting events. The most search, the World Cup. FEMA and the FCC will be testing their alert systems on your phones and televisions next month. It will take place at about 2.20 Eastern time on October 4th. The alerts will be in English or Spanish, depending on which language setting you have on your phone. And Meta and LG are reportedly teaming up to build a new virtual reality headset to compete with Apple's new Vision Pro. The partnership will focus on an improved version of Meta's Quest VR headset. Sources say it's expected to launch in 2025 with a $2,000 price tag. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Okay, I just want to add something here. So mm -hmm. the Apple One, 3500, uh -huh. and I've never tried it, never experimented with it, but our producer Hardy says he has one, and it actually has a lot of practical applications if you need more than one computer screen. He can essentially produce on it. So who knows? You know, I'm not necessarily a believer, but it could be the future of technology. Yeah, not yet, but maybe when the price comes down just a little bit. Uh, I would say a lot. <laughs> I'm not spending $3,500. It's a lot. It's All a lot. Right. Time now, 528, 80 degrees. Another round of COVID going around. Up next, what the CDC is recommending now for people who get COVID-19 over the next few months. Growing a sustainable native ecosystem in your own backyard. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMS. Say we introduce you to a brand new local nursery that only sells native plants. Making headlines this morning, a new variant of COVID making its way through Texas and across the country. People more likely to know somebody who might have COVID or may have had COVID themselves, but admittedly, this is hard to validate uh, because there's just not as much testing. Up next, the new recommendations by doctors if you happen to catch COVID over the next few months. And looking out there with a live cam, we'll take the 80 degrees for now. Not too bad out there when you step outside this morning. But yes, another week of hot temperatures, but maybe some hope next week. Okay, look at that. Well, good morning. It is September 5th. It is the day after Labor Day. A lot of people yeah. starting their work week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You three specifically. So, <laughs> I know you had the allergic reaction, but other than that, did you get to enjoy the weekend at all? Uh, yeah, really low key. I uh, braised some short ribs on Saturday. Nice. One of those slow cooked days. Didn't that really do good. much. And I was like, stay at home, chill out. You gonna pull a Mark Austin on us and tell us all about it? Not have samples here. I would never did pull a Mark Austin. Something? I would bring it back to you, <laughs> okay, Mike. Uh, but thankfully, I mean, it was just one of those days. I just stayed inside and just watched people enjoy the pool from my balcony. So. That's yeah. probably a smart move. Good. Stay inside, enjoy the AC. Yeah. yeah. And the other problem is we're not gonna be the the humidity is going to be up just a little bit this afternoon, especially compared to the past uh -oh. couple of days when we've had that lower humidity in the afternoon. By the way, today is a rather infamous anniversary. Mm -hmm. If anybody remembers back in 2000, September the 5th, 111 degrees here. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, geez. Hottest temperature ever recorded here in San Antonio. Remember it well. Got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now, and temperature stands out there at the airport at 80 dew points at 74 measure moisture in the atmosphere, which means yeah, you, you definitely notice the humidity when you uh, step outside this morning. Wind is out of the south at 10 miles per hour. Bit of a heat index right now. 87 Canyon Lake, same thing, Castroville, Stinson as well. 85 at the airport in Port SA. Feels like 88 right now up the road in New Braunfels. Mold is moderate. Ragweed is on the low side. Of course, the update account comes out in a couple of hours. Few clouds, plenty of humidity hanging around here this morning. Mostly sunny skies, more triple digits again today. And yes, the humidity will drop down this afternoon. But again, like I was talking about, not as low as what we've had, especially late last week where we had very, very dry air in the afternoon. So just enough hanging around here that you will definitely feel every bit of that 101, which is our high temperature. Rest of the week, triple digits actually getting a bit hotter. Yeehaw, going into the uh, end of the week. However, by next week, we are starting to see, at least it looks right now, a, a subtle shift in the overall pattern, which means a couple of showers and look at that, some lower temperatures, not looking at triple digits next week. 
Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. So braised short ribs. Braised Cabernet braised short ribs, I oh, should say. Oh, yes. man. Yeah, but, you know, I'm thinking about that allergic reaction. Maybe uh, it's best that I don't bring that around. <laughs> Who knows, right? Uh, hey, folks, you see some flashing lights behind me. Now, this isn't anything that uh, is too concerning here, but we do have a stall 18-wheeler. Just spoke to our friends at TransGuide. We know that exit ramp is blocked at this hour, and we do have one of those King Kong wreckers on the scene, so helping that driver move out of the way, but it could take some time. So just give yourself plenty of time if you have to head out the door in the next few minutes. And remember, this is along I-37 southbound at Southton Road, and that's where that exit ramp remains blocked. Now, the good news is we have the early morning on our side, which means we don't have a big a lot. We're not spotting a lot of congestion. That is so that's better news to report. At one point, there was actually a minor crash reported along 1604 over on the far northwest side. It looks like that's already cleared out and what we can expect are some pretty quiet roadways. The same story if you are traveling into town. I know I just showed you these travel times, but we'll get this updated here for you in just a moment. It's about 27 minutes along 37 northbound heading in from Pleasanton, 28 minutes along US 90 eastbound. We're not in the red just yet from Castroville, but I'll get that updated. And that arrival from Lytle still about 16 minutes along I-35 northbound. But the big problem looks to be here, and it looks like we are finally seeing some resolution with that 18-wheeler finally getting out of the way. Hopefully the driver's okay, but looks like that mess should be cleared up pretty soon. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Back to the late breaking news, San Antonio police say they have no suspects, do they? but they do have plenty of evidence all related to a shooting that happened earlier this morning. It happened in the medical center area in the 4000 block of Horizon Hill Boulevard. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, you mentioned they found the victim sitting in a crashed car. Well, that's right. The car in the parking lot of the Horizon Hill Apartments, uh, where that tow truck is right now, about to tow it away. Police are wrapping up their investigation here, but they did find quite a bit of evidence, including shell casings that were scattered in three different parts of this area. Uh, they say that they did find the victim, a man who was shot in his head inside that crashed car. They're not sure whether he crashed first or was shot first, but they did start getting calls about both of those incidents about 3.30 this morning police arrived and found the victim again inside the car with a gunshot wound in his head. He was rushed to a hospital and the last uh, word that police had was that he was in critical condition. As for who is responsible for the shooting, they're still trying to figure that out and they're hoping that some of the evidence that they collected here might lead them to that shooter. Reporting live in the medical center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. All right, we told you about the new variant of COVID. Well, the good news it may not be too vicious throughout this fall. According to two teams of U.S. scientists, people who are vaccinated appear to be able to fight off BA 2.86. Now, this matches the findings previously released by China and Sweden. However, as seen as John Lawrence reports, the virus is still swirling around the nation in increasing numbers. COVID-19 didn't take a vacation this summer, and it's not heading out for fall either. How bad it's going to get, we don't know. As you know, this is a very unpredictable virus. It's shown us that over the last three and a half years. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, COVID-related hospitalizations in the U.S. have been inching upward over the past few weeks. And on Monday night, the White House released a statement saying First Lady Jill Biden tested positive for the virus. A spokeswoman for Mrs. Biden says she's staying in her Delaware home dealing with, quote, mild symptoms. President Joe Biden tested negative. People more likely to know somebody who might have COVID or may have had COVID themselves. But admittedly, this is hard to validate uh, because there's just not as much testing. The CDC recommends that people who catch COVID-19 should isolate for at least five days, wear a mask until testing negative twice over a two-day period, and keep up to date with vaccinations. There's going to be a CDC advisory meeting on September 12th. That is the point where this booster may be recommended uh, broadly for the population. We'll see what happens. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In Rosenberg, southwest of Houston, 23 people inside a Denny's restaurant injured when the driver of a Jeep crashed into the Denny. So take a look. As you can see, he's going fast enough to break through that wall, completely enter the building. Some people suffering minor injuries. Others had severe injuries all non-life-threatening. Now, the ages of those who were injured in this crash, they range from 12 years old to 60 years old. Still, the investigation is underway, trying to figure out what exactly led to this crash. 
We do know that the driver was not injured. Authorities in India are ramping up security measures ahead of the G20 summit later this week. All online deliveries from restaurants, food services and markets, as well as commercial sites like Amazon, are being banned for the duration of the summit. Authorities say they cannot allow the activity in the designated controlled zone for the G20. That's where leaders, including the Indian Prime Minister and U.S. President Joe Biden, will be meeting. However, essential services like medicine deliveries will be allowed. The G20 summit takes place on September 9th and September 10th. All right, so you're looking at the longest alligator ever captured in the state of Mississippi. Well, you are now. Look at this. The Mississippi Department of Fish, Fisheries, Wildlife, and Parks says this 14-foot, 3-inch gator broke the state record for longest alligator harvested. Now, a group of Mississippi hunters, they captured the reptile in the West Central Alligator Hunting Zone. If you're not terrified enough of it being over 14 feet long, it also weighs 800 pounds. So this is basically a dinosaur. Hunting alligators <laughs> for sport has been permitted in the state since 2005. In 2021, a total of 776 alligators were caught. The average length of one of those gators just under eight feet, about half the length of the record breaking capture. That looks crazy. That looks like a dinosaur. I mean, it's 800 pounds. Right? It's bigger than 14 feet long. A mini dinosaur, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's <laughs> well, that's pretty sizable <laughs> to me. I'm going to be honest with you. I yeah. will say, I've eaten alligator before. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Well, alligator po' boy, you're good to go. Aw, you're going to make that alligator sad. It looked like it was smiling He's in the video. He's already caught, i got to tell you. <laughs> well, it looked like he was smiling in some of those shots. Look, I'm going to be honest with like... you, Steph. I don't know if he was alive in some of those shots. No, probably not. <laughs> All right, time now, 540, 80 degrees. Up next, we'll look at the scary moments for oh, students at terrifying. the University yeah, of Wisconsin after the pier collapsed right there. Yeah. Ugh, and what happened after? All right, we're back here at home taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Well, it is, as Mike says, meteorological fall. We're still seeing triple digit day after triple digit day. We're going to check in with him and Stephen Cavazos in just a few moments. And welcome back. It is 544. Now to that pair of collapse in Wisconsin. An estimated 60 to 80 college students were on that deck when it suddenly plunged into a lake. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimber. This morning, a different kind of peer pressure at the University of Wisconsin in Madison as the fall semester gets underway. A deck with dozens of people suddenly collapsing into a lake on campus, plunging students and members of the public into the water. At least 20 people were hurt and one transported to the hospital. It was definitely shock. I was like, oh my God. Wreckage can be seen floating in the lake after the collapse. The pier on Lake Mendota was scheduled to be removed today for the end of the summer season. That's like never something you would think would happen. Incidents like this aren't unheard of. Back in July, a deck collapse at a country club in Billings, Montana, injured dozens. And in June, eight children and one adult were hurt when part of this Texas boardwalk fell through. Back in Madison, relief that no one was seriously injured. Everyone was just speechless and like I, I, everyone was in awe. Like no one could believe that just happened. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. That is just horrifying. Very scary. Because think about it. How many times have you walked on a pier, gone to a deck? been on the water when it's crowded when it's crowded yeah this is why i avoid crowds in general time now 5 45 80 degrees Let's look out there with trans guide at loop 1604 Petraca road now i-37 at houston where things are moving in those shots but we will be checking in with steven cabasas very soon good morning and welcome back so as we discussed a lot of people coming back from a long weekend yes yesterday it seemed like no one was on the roads but already yeah. we're seeing stuff pick up this morning yeah people are back today so Stephen cavazos has been keeping his eye on the roadways yep back to work for a lot of folks out there and back to school for a lot of those kiddos but thankfully it's pretty early right now if you plan on hitting the roads you are in luck quiet is how we are starting this tuesday morning 37 at us 181 now 37 we did have some problems out there earlier folks we had that stalled 18 wheeler that was lingering around for a little while but looks like that's already cleared out and for a lot of folks that are waking up this is really what you're going to see out there just maybe a bit more traffic but the majority are pretty quiet roadways as you can see behind me plenty of green on the screen but 
if you plan on heading to the gas station a little bit later this morning, here's what you can expect according to AAA. Now, as of today, we are seeing somewhat of a dip in the gas prices here in Bear County from uh, three dollars and thirty four cents. We went down just about a penny or two to three dollars and thirty three cents around the state. We're looking at three dollars and thirty eight cents and around the country three dollars and eighty one cents. That's price has actually held steady for a little while now, but um, not sure about you guys, but on my way into work, I stopped to get gas and uh, didn't really expect to see just a slight dip in the prices there. But if you have to head out there, maybe fuel up before any uh, trips to the school or bus stop, just make sure to know what to expect. Other than that, we're off to a good start, I think. Good Phillip, news. Philip, yesterday, three and a quarter. Oh, so I, yeah. Where are you going here, Mike? It was just the uh, HEV near my house. OK, yeah. yeah. Convenience is great when you have one nearby. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Especially with 325. Mm -hmm. Yes. Still not as good as it was a couple of years ago. <laughs> no, but, you know, the world was completely shut down. True. Anyway, uh, take a look at this picture. I love this beautiful picture of the uh, purple sage. And uh, this was purple sage is blooming, of course. Now, Sarah Spivey, we were talking about this yesterday, and she uh, posted an article talking about how, and I believe that might have been the rain back there on August 22nd, not September, but uh, how the old wives' tale is when Texas sage, purple sage, starts to bloom. Rain is not too far off. We may have some in about a week. So, and the way things have been going, that's not too far off. Lots of clear skies starting off this morning. 80 degrees in town. Castro, Port S.A., Canyon Lake, Stinson all at 81. We are going to make it up through the 80s this morning. Of course, some morning clouds hanging around here and a few, one or two of them here and there, kind of like what we had yesterday. 91 at noon. And by the way, the one o'clock temperature of 93, that's the normal high this time of year. And we are going to make it up to 101 later on this afternoon. Just one or two clouds kind of hanging around here. The dew points today are going to be sort of hanging in here as well as tomorrow in the low 60s in the afternoon. So enough to where you're going to notice the humidity, then it will be dropping down. But as we get that drier air by, especially Friday, that's when we're going to see our hottest actual air temperature getting up close to 104. Now we got to jump further ahead into the future. And by this weekend, nothing's going to be happening now through Saturday, except hot temperatures, plenty of sunshine. By Sunday, there is a very small chance for a stray shower or two. Again, long range computer model kind of broad brushes things in, but one or two of those out there on Monday as well. A little bit better chance of rain, especially up in portions of the hill country as we go into Tuesday as well as on Wednesday. And again, this does not mean it's going to be raining everywhere, but at least there is that opportunity for some of this rain to come in here. And again, the reason for it is the high, which is sitting right on top of us right now, it's going to basically be on top of us, sort of strengthen a little bit as we go into the end of the week. But then watch how that starts to weaken somewhat going into the weekend moves off there to the west of us. We get in this northwesterly flow. Little disturbances start to move on in here and this big trough up there around the Great Lakes is going to start to kind of have more of an influence. So that's going to start to push that thing on out of here. And that's what's going to be sending some of these disturbances. Actually, a, a front's going to try and lie in the area. But overall, not only will we have that chance for some rain, but then some lower temperatures going into next week. Not this week, though. It's actually going to get hotter as the week rolls on. So 101 today. Today will be day number 69 of the total number of 100 degree days we've had this year. Tomorrow, 70, of course, we continue and go through Sunday with triple digits. But that small chance of rain comes in here Sunday and then gets better by next week. We look forward to that. Yeah, so week away. Very good. Thank you. you know, Steph's usually the, the optimistic person. Look, we see double digits on the screen. I know. This is a miracle. I know. I think that's the first time I've had double digits on there. And Aww. well, except for the end of uh, August a, when we had that right, rain. Small but, uh, break. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to not, not, trust me. Yes. Look at that. All right. Mike Osage, thanks so much. 553, 80 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, three, four, four, fireball five. Daily four eight one three zero fireball zero and your cash five seven sixteen thirty one thirty two thirty four text two step nine twenty three twenty five twenty seven big number nine and your Powerball one twenty six thirty two forty six fifty one Powerball thirteen power play three good luck we'll be right back.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, it is a hot one for so many folks. Marquette, Michigan had an all-time hot September temperature of 95. There are many records possible to drop today. We'll get into all of that. And uh, more on the rip current risk after a dramatic rescue of a surfer saving a struggling swimmer and a dangerous holiday weekend at the beach. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. We'll still hold in our next hour of GMSA. San Antonio police officers dealing with another suspect. This one on the southeast side. And we hear from the chief what unfolded that ended with the suspect being shot and killed. Plus, we're getting you ready for day one of the Ken Pax impeachment trial. What you need to know about the case before things start up today in Austin. And up next, a massive manhunt continues on the East Coast for a convicted killer who escaped from prison scary tale of a homeowner who met him face to face. Plus, we know people returning to work, returning to school today after a long weekend. What are the roadways going to look like? We're checking with Stephen Cavazos in just a few moments. This morning on GMSA, over 20 people are recovering after a car crashed through a Denny's, but we've learned overnight from Houston. And taking a live look out the Alamo City, the sun is not up, but do expect those temperatures to rise throughout the day. 80 degrees now. How hot will it get? How many triple digit days are on the forecast? We're going to check in with Mike Osterage in just a few moments. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Tuesday, September 5th. For so many of you out there, it is the first day back to work, back to school. Speaking of which, how was your three-day weekend? It was wonderful. Thank you for asking. Uh, went out of town. It was a little hotter where I was, but it was still nice in Laredo, south nice. of here. You have a new niece. Yes, brand, brand new baby Congratulations, niece. adorable. Thank you, thank you. So you got new family. Mike got yes. a new tan. <laughs> got a new tan. <laughs> also yeah. out of town. <laughs> it's called didn't quite get the sunscreen everywhere it should have gotten. So yes, but uh, it was beautiful down at the down at the coast this weekend. On Sunday, a lot of folks down there, but that nice sea breeze coming on in. And then yesterday, uh, just kind of sitting out by the pool for the last day, it was pretty hot because the humidity didn't drop as much in the afternoon. That's going to be the situation today as well, where the humidity, yes, it will drop from where it is right now, but not like what we had last week. So here's what it looks like outside. We've got uh, just one or two clouds hanging out there. 81 degrees right now. The dew point, 73. So we still have enough humidity to where you notice it when you step outside. Wind out of the southeast, primarily 8 miles per hour. Heat index 86, 87 Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, as well as Stinson. Mold is on the moderate side. Ragweed is low. The update account is going to come out about 7.30 or so this morning. And temperatures, we will stay right around 80, 81 the next couple of hours. Warm up through the 80s, 91 at noon. 1 o'clock, that's the normal high temperature, 93, and then add almost 10 degrees to that. So we're still way, way above normal, obviously. We're going to make it up to 101 later on this afternoon. This is going to be day number 69 of triple-digit temperatures so far this year, and we're going to continue to rack them up this week. There is some hope down the road, way down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, still got some problems out there? Well, those uh, resolved pretty quickly, Mike. Thankfully, for anyone that's hitting the roads this early in the morning, let's take a look at what you can expect. I-10 at the Y is a great shot. We are seeing a little bit more traffic now that we've entered 6 a.m., which is always expected at this time. So just make sure to pack patience anytime you see some congestion out on the roadway. That could just be a lot of folks returning to work and maybe getting the early start to drop the kids off at school. But right behind me, uh, for the most part, we have just seen some quiet roadways as folks are returning to their daily lives after Labor Day. But just make sure you take your time, especially if you're traveling into San Antonio. Thankfully, there's no need to rush. It's still pretty green from seeing along I-10 westbound with 27 minutes at this hour. Along 87 northbound heading in from Lavernia, it's about 33 minutes. And for our friends in Floresville, if you plan on hitting the roads and heading right here to the Alamo City, you can expect about a 29 minute drive time. But we'll get it back here at this shot at I-10 at the Y. Our morning commute started off just a bit bumpy, but things have improved, but getting busier. So I'll keep a close eye on things. I'll have another update for you a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, this morning, a man is in critical condition after police say he was shot near a west side apartment complex overnight. So it happened in the 2000 block of Bandera Road near Cloudcroft Drive between a corner store and the apartments. Police tell us that the man was shot in the stomach area and went to the apartments to get help. So far, police do not have any suspect information. This morning, we're gathering new details on a meetup at a northeast side park that was shut down by San Antonio police. 
thousands of people showing up at Lady Bird Johnson Park Saturday to meet TikTok influencer Cam Wilder after he announced that he'd be there. Officers tell us around three or 4,000 people went to the park. Police tell us people were not acting violently. However, the size of the crowd did pose a threat to public safety. Happening today, the eyes of Texas are on Austin. The impeachment trial for suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton will begin this morning around 9 a.m. So if you remember, the Texas House of Representatives impeached him months ago. Paxton is accused of repeatedly abusing his office to help a donor. More than 4,000 pages of evidence have been published in this unique case. There is no judge in this trial. Instead, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick will oversee the proceedings. Top of your morning headlines, 23 people eating inside a Denny's restaurant injured yesterday after the driver of a Jeep crashed right through the restaurant. So this all happened in Rosenberg, just southwest of Houston. So take a look. I mean, this was the area, and that's the Denny's. The caution tape still up in the video. Now the Jeep going fast enough to break completely through the wall. This is the aftermath breaking through the building. Some people suffering minor cuts. Others had severe injuries, all non-life threatening. The age of those who were injured, that ranges from 12 years old all the way up to 60 years old. Still, the investigation is underway. I'm trying to figure out what exactly caused the crash. We do know the driver was not injured. And tributes are pouring in for Steve Harwell, the former lead singer of the rock group Smash Mouth, who died yesterday at the age of 56. Harwell passed away in his Idaho home after entering hospice care for liver failure. Smash Mouth's hits include Walkin' on the Sun and I'm a Believer, featured in the hit movie Shrek. Now the group has continued to perform with a new vocalist since Harwell left the band in 2021. And students at the University of Wisconsin in Madison facing a different kind of peer pressure. Take a look. The fall semester getting underway and that deck with dozens of people suddenly collapsing on a lake on campus. Students plunging into the lake, members of the public into the water, 20 people injured, one had to be taken to the hospital, so the majority non or not severe. Now, the school says the area was not staffed by lifeguards at the time of the collapse. Right now they're still investigating, trying to figure out how exactly this happened. Now the urgent manhunt for an escaped killer in Pennsylvania is entering day six. Investigators got the fugitive's mother to even record a message pleading for him to surrender. And they have been blasting it from search helicopters above as the community remains on edge. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, a close call for this Chester County, Pennsylvania homeowner nearly coming face to face in his house with prison escapee Danilo Cavalcante on the run for nearly a week. Woke up my wife. I said, hey, I think there might be somebody downstairs, um, you know, get, get on the phone. Ryan Drummond says he and Cavalcante had a chilling exchange from one floor to another in his home last week. What I decided to do was flip the light switch on and off, you know, three or four or five times, pause, and then he flipped the light switch from downstairs three or four times, which was the moment of like, oh my God, this guy is down there. Cavalcante slipping out of Drummond's door, getting away with food. Peaches, apples, uh, green snap peas, were had been missing. You know, we have a bunch of little steak knives. It's possible that he could have also taken one of those. Authorities say Cavalcanti somehow broke out of the Chester County prison last Thursday. He was just starting a life sentence without parole for stabbing his ex-girlfriend to death in front of her young children. Police zeroing in on a two mile radius around the prison, noting four credible sightings, including home burglaries that they believe was Cavalcanti. We can confirm that we have investigated um, actually two burglaries. Those incidents coupled with this home surveillance video captured on Saturday of Cavalcante hiding in a backyard, leaving investigators convinced of his general whereabouts. Authorities have still not said how Cavalcante escaped six days after he broke out. A $10,000 reward was offered for information leading to his capture. Derek Dennis, ABC News. Time now, 608. Degrees. And still come, Google is celebrating a big birthday that might have you feeling a little old. We'll explain before 6.30. After the break, the summer sun has not been kind to local tourism. That has some new Braunfels business owners saying the struggle is real. What they're hoping to do as we head into the fall season. And looking out there with live cam, we are starting your day at 80 degrees and you will need your shades to drive around San Antonio later this afternoon. We'll be right back.